really an experience. I am right now on Mars. Should humans, when humans, get to Mars? The more we explore, we might find something out there. If we land on Mars, we're going to be out there for a lot more than a couple of days. Perseverance, safely, on the surface of Mars. It's important for science to do research in an extreme environment. Life support backpacks. So yeah, make sure. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, oh, she's stuck, she's stuck. For the two weeks of my mission, I am living, working, breathing, eating as if I'm on Mars. Would you live on Mars? I'm on my way to this inhospitable world right now. That's crazy. Or at least a simulated version of it. I am in what is known as the High Seas Habitat that is actually on the slope of the volcano Mauna Loa in Hawaii. I'm on what's called an analog mission, a mission here on Earth that mimics what it would be like to be in space. You may be asking yourself, why? Why would you do this? Why would you live on Mars, on Earth? Is it just for fun? <laughs> are you having a Mars vacation? Um, and analog missions are actually a huge, hugely important part of research when it comes to space exploration. In fact, Apollo astronauts came to places like Hawaii to train to go to the moon. Wow, what a vest. This is a practice grounds for when we do go to Mars. For the two weeks of my mission, I will show you what it's like to live on Mars. Welcome to Mars! I'm on this mission with five other women, making us an all-female crew. Among us are scientists, artists, writers, military personnel, and mothers. We came together as six strangers from all walks of life to explore and experiment through the lens of the red planet. I'm gonna give you a little tour inside of the high seas habitat, the airlock. If this green button is red, it means do not go through the door. Uh, if you've ever seen a sci-fi movie, you probably have a pretty good idea of what it looks like when you go into the airlock when you're not supposed to go into the airlock. In the general living space, we have all of our desks where we do a lot of our work and our mission report writing. There's a whole science to the toilet system here on Mars. When anyone pees of any gender or sex, etc., they use this urinal. I'm not going to tell you how. I'm not going to show you how. I'm sorry I had to show you this, but you have to know. Everyone's giggling behind me as I do my bathroom tours. Here is my room. Here's my little little home away from home on Mars. It's a little messy. I'll probably clean that up. Honestly, pretty spacious for living on Mars. We're going to try to make our first meal on Mars. I think we're aiming for broccoli cheese mashed potatoes. Dehydrated Broccoli flakes, ooh, ah. We are extremely resource conscious. Pretty much everything is freeze dried or in powdered form. I couldn't bring a jug of milk on board if I wanted to. The heavier your payload is, the more fuel it will take to launch off of Earth, and that's more expensive and more difficult engineering. So to take that weight away, we just take the water away. So instead of having a bunch of gallons of milk, we have a giant bag of powdered milk. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> in many ways, they're actually a lot easier to cook than Earth potatoes because you literally just add hot water. The magic of the potatoes coming to life. Getting nice and fluffy. I'm picking out diced carrots and green peas. And these ones last a whopping 25 years. So we will be good on Mars. It's pretty weird and it's as Martian as you would expect. I'm already starting to miss the feeling of the wind and the breeze on my skin. We won't be able to leave the habitat without a spacesuit on. God, we have a beautiful Martian sunset. Oh my God, wow. It's going to be more challenging than I expect. You know, I'm, I'm breathing air, but I, I wanna be outside breathing air. I'm looking forward to the first spacewalk or Mars walk, which fingers crossed might happen. Because of the storms, which you can probably hear, our solar panel is not catching much. Like seven in the morning, um, I'm talking quietly because I don't want to wake everyone up, but 
sorry I'm a little out of breath, the um, the lower oxygen up here is a little bit of an adjustment and the weather maybe has gotten worse. It's continued to be overcast and we are officially in low power mode where absolutely all non-essential electricity is disabled. I'm not sure exactly sure what today will bring. If the weather continues to be bad, we could extend low power mode. I've only been here a couple days now, but it's been a quick lesson in kind of <laughs> really realizing exactly how much you're using and consuming of electricity, water, oxygen. Hopefully the sun starts shining again. The kettle's on, <gasps> hot water is on. I think we are back in business. It is a beautiful sunny day on Mars and luckily our batteries are charging once again. It's finally happening. I'm going on my first spacewalk. Fitting spacesuits for the first time. Dang, good. I feel a little bit like a little kid. <laughs> it might be a little too loose. This feels really good. This feels perfect. Yes. I, think you both I love the collar on it though. It's very uh, Star Trek. Don't want anything sticking out on Mars. Any? We don't want any of the Martian air to seep in. All right, I'm all suited up. <sighs> so I have my communication device. This goes in here. Life support backpack. Helmet time. So you don't suffocate. Plug it in. Life support. Pressure's going down, we're decompressing, ready to be in Mars ambient. Oh my god! Oh, careful. Never thought I would <laughs> be so relieved to see a bunch of rocks and just feel the air against a spacesuit. It was challenging. Um, and we do have the airflow from our life support backpacks, but we're at this high altitude. I couldn't be happier to be outside. And I couldn't be more out of breath. And we are climbing up these really, really difficult traverse hills. And we have a heavy backpack on and heavy boots and a heavy helmet. Oh, I gotta take it slow on Mars. Take it slow. Take it slow. Today, my crew and I are trekking to a lava tube or a natural tunnel made underground by lava a long, long time ago. Ready? Yes. That's a big old lava tube right there. Wow! Woo With missions like this, scientists are studying the extreme microscopic organisms that live in places like lava tubes to help better understand what kind of life could exist out in the universe. Welcome to a lava tube. Holy cow, it's pretty dark. Wow. All of this beautiful white stuff everywhere you see. Well, that's the so-called space cocaine. And that material is actually the material that NASA Goddard is studying. They're looking to see if this cool sparkly white stuff is made by living creatures. By finding weird microbes on Earth, they can better understand what weird microbes might be lurking out on places like Mars. The lava is not kind to the butt. Oh, oh she's stuck, she's stuck. You're good, Brandy, you got it. You're doing great. Awesome. Dome, sweet dome. Please say hello. I'm a man. I am pooped. Oh, How you feel? God. I'm really gonna miss this place. There's a beautiful beautiful rainbow right next to the habitat. I'm gonna miss Mars. I'm gonna miss my crew. I'm gonna miss our weird powdered food. No, that's a lie. Leaving Mars today. One last look at the habitat. So this is it. We're about to walk through the airlock and hop in our capsule back to Earth. Yeah, we're. <laughs> it's 
stepping through that door, I am overwhelmed with gratitude for our strange blue planet. Oh, it tastes so nice! The air. More than pizza, more than fresh fruit. We hang in a delicate cosmic balance. Not too hot, not too cold. With a thick atmosphere and just the right chemical cocktail to have sparked light billions of years ago. We're coming for you, Earth. Coming for you. And while I didn't really leave Earth, I feel like I've seen it from far away. Like an astronaut floating in the vacuum of space, staring awestruck at their home. I truly just feel so grateful, not just for this experience, but for how much it's made me appreciate Earth. As we continue to explore, landing new rovers and one day humans on the surface of Mars, our planet will remain one of the most curious and spectacular artifacts of the cosmos. Thank you.